Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MWXNE. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Okay, when you first open it up, you are going to see a wired remote right here and a wireless remote. Uh, you will also see a grounding cable, the user's manual for this inverter. On the side, you will get a positive, and on the other side, you will get your negative cables right here. And they look to be four gauge cables. Then we have the inverter, some fuses, and they supply you with a wrench. All right, so here is the inverter. Let's go ahead and take the measurements of it first. The length of this inverter is right at 15 inches if you include the, uh, the posts at the end, the terminals. Um, the height of the inverter is right at 6 and 3 quarters inches. And the depth of the inverter is 3 and 7 eighths inches. And it does weigh in at about 8.8 .8 pounds. All right, if you look at the top of the inverter, you can see that there is a small display right here. We'll be able to see more about it when we turn it on. If we look at the input side, you can see that there are two fans. We have our uh, battery positive and our battery negative. And also the, uh, the connections are opposite from each other. So you, uh, you have a, a less of a chance of accidentally touching. It is made out of all aluminum, so that will help with heat dispersion. And then on the, on the output side, we have two AC outputs right here, rated at 15 amps. And then we have a, a more universal AC output right here, which uh, actually I have never seen this. I've never seen this output before, which is, which is different to me. It looks like probably a you know, a US and a European type of plug. And then we have our connection for our grounding connection right here. Here is the communication port for the remote. We also have two USB A's that are rated at 18 watts. We have a USB A that's rated for 24 watts of output. And we have a USB C power delivery, which is rated at 60 watts. We have our off on switch and we have our power and our fault lights right here. Now it does come with this wireless remote, but the battery that it needs, that it requires, it does not come with a battery. And this battery is like some sort of specialty battery. It's not a triple A or double A battery. And unfortunately I don't have that battery, so I won't be able to test out this remote. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the cabling that was supplied with the inverter. And we're gonna connect it up to this Red Odeo 165 amp hour 12 volt battery. Now this battery has, I believe, 150 amp BMS inside, so it is perfectly suited for a 2000 watt inverter. So let me go ahead and connect it up, and we'll continue on. All right, the display on the top of the unit and the remote show the exact same thing, so I'll be able to just show you everything from the remote. And you can see right on the remote, it does show that the battery voltage is 13.2 volts. We have a voltage on the AC side of 113 volts. Uh, here is a battery uh, capacity symbol, but that's probably just based on voltage. So if you have a lithium iron phosphate battery, that might not help you very much. This is our output wattage right here, and we have a temperature of 23 degrees Celsius currently inside the unit. When it comes to the app for the battery, it does show that it is pulling 1.3 amps. Uh, at 12 volts, so that's like 17 watts on standby, but I don't think that's very accurate because it keeps switching between 1.3 and zero. So let me go ahead and use a clamp meter to find out the true amperage coming from the battery. And the amperage coming from the cable is actually showing uh, 0.86 amps. So if you multiply 0.86 times 13.2 volts, you get 11.35 watts of standby consumption from this inverter. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a 1200 watt heat gun and plug it into here and see what happens. See if the fans turn on, uh, see if it starts smoking or anything horrible. So let's just go ahead and plug it in. All right, it's plugged in. Let's go ahead and just turn it on full blast. 
and the display does show that we're pulling right at 1,000 watts right now. The battery voltage has gone down to 12.4, and our voltage is still at 112 volts. The fans on the unit have not turned on at all, and we're just gonna go by what the unit says and what the BMS on the battery says to see what kind of efficiency we have while pulling 1,000 watts out from the AC side. And this does say that it is 1,008 watts, but the Red Audio battery says that we're pulling 1,145 watts from the battery. So we'll do 1,008 divided by 1,145, and that gives us an 88% efficiency. All right, while it was running, while we were doing that test, I pressed and held onto this 110 to 120 volt button and the inverter freaked out. It completely stopped and it threw up an F13 error. That's probably because I was trying to change the voltage of the output while it was running. Don't do that. But now it's changed and now it's showing 122 volts of AC output. So let's go ahead and run this again and see if our efficiencies are any better. All right, well, the fans have kicked on on the unit. Uh, it shows the output. We're still getting 122 volts of output. Uh, and it shows 1195 watts of output now. And the Red Audio app is now showing uh, 1364. Actually, it's kind of fluctuating. Let's say it's 1370. It's, saying, it's showing 1370 watts of output. So if we divide those, 1195 divided by 1370, uh, we actually get 87% efficiency. So it was actually a little bit more efficient running at that lower voltage. But I feel like 120 volts is a little nicer to your equipment than 110 volts. All right, let's go ahead and check out the inside of this unit. All right. And I am uh, not about to say that I am a professional when it comes to the internals of an inverter. There are a few things that I recognize, but for the most part, I just want to show you how it looks. Uh, it looks like uh, these data cables don't really need to be tied down, but I do like that they have a zip tie on all of the fan cabling and the DC side cabling. It looks like the cabling for the DC side, uh, it is four, it looks like four 12 gauge cable, but it might be possibly 10 gauge. But we'll go with 12 gauge because on the side of safety. Uh, there are 640 amp fuses right here and it does not look like they are soldered in, so if you ever need to replace them, you can. Like I said before, it does come with three 40 amp fuses and a baggie. Here is the wiring for the AC side right here, which looks like it is, again, probably 12 or 14 gauge cable. Here is probably the heat sensor for the internal, uh, right on this, uh, on this heat sink right here, there's, there's a nice thick heat sink on this side and another one on this side. And I do like how the heat sink, you can see that the heat sink completely surrounds the MOSFETs on the inside. So I'm guessing there's some on the inside there. And there's also some surrounded by this heat sink over here. But all in all, to my eyes, everything looks very clean and put together. Uh, there's not a ton of glue holding everything together which I really appreciate. The glue that they do have is red, and I do see it in some spots on some of the plugs, but it's not just like poured over everything, which is nice. All right, so if you have any questions about the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MWXNE, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description, just in case you wanna look further into it. Thanks again for watching this video, and have a great day. Bye-bye.